flows. Life is flux and mind seeks uncertainty. We are afraid of life because life is flux, constantly moving. Mind wants certainty. If you really want to be alive, be ready to be insecure. There is no security and there is no way to create security. There is only one way. Do not live. Only then you will be secure. So those who are dead, they are absolutely secure. An alive person is insecure, constantly moving into the unknown dimension. An alive person is secure, insecure. Insecurity is the very central core of life, but mind wants security. Life, in life, in existence, there is a basic duality. Existence exists as duality and mind wants to choose one part and deny the other. You have two feet for walking. Two feet are necessary. And when the two feet are walking in harmony with one another, then walking is possible. If one feet is less efficient, then walking will not be proper. And we do face sometimes that kind of a situation. For example, in life you want to be happy, you want pleasure, but you do not want pain. But pain is part of pleasure, the other aspect of it. The coin is one. On one side is pleasure and on the other side is pain. You want pleasure but do not know that the more you want pleasure, the more pain will follow. And the more you become sensitive to pleasure, the more you become sensitive to pain as well. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjun, one who is equanimous, one who is equipoised, amidst the duality, unmoving, is awakened one. For this, he uses the example of heat and cold, that is a pair of opposites. Heat and cold is a phenomena that is constantly happening. So you know how to adjust yourself during heat and during cold. So when the pain comes in, then you adjust accordingly. Day and night are part of one synergistic harmony. After the day, night follows. During the night, you rest and you recuperate your energies. It is a period for hibernation. So the sutra that is used by Krishna says matra sparshastu kaunteya sitoshna sukha dukha daha agama pai no nitya anitya istitasya bharata Arjun, one who is equipoised amidst the dualities, amidst the pair of opposites, is an awakened one. They arise from the sense of perception and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. You have a coin which has on one side head and on the other side tail. Head and tail always stay together. They stay together and they disappear together. If you want if you are thirsty, you need to dispose of your coin. 
to exchange for the drink that you need to satiate your thirst. You cannot be partial saying that you will keep the head and only share the tail. If you want to keep the coin with you intact, then you will have to remain thirsty because the substance, the drink that you need to get to satiate your thirst can only be exchanged with the coin. So if you want to be blissful in life, you have to exchange that with the coin of duality. If you are one-sided, then, then it cannot happen, the transcendence cannot happen. So your exchanging the coin for the drink is a transcendence. There are two things, pain and pleasure. But the ultimate, which is transcendence, which is equanimity, is beyond pain and pleasure. You have to discard the coin of pain and pleasure in order to attain to the state of equanimity, attain to the state of awakening. And this is what awakening means, living a life beyond the dualities. The walking is a transcendence beyond the duality of left and right feet. You do not deny the existence of left foot and right foot as long as you are walking. As long as you are living life, the pain and pleasure, the heat and cold, the good and bad will always exist. But you use the two to go beyond this. You have to use the two feet to go beyond and beyond the two feet is walking and through walking you cover a distance. You reach the destination where you want to be. This is the very secret of life. So a person who wants pleasure should be ready to accept pain. This is just like valleys and hills. You want the peak and the hills, but you do not want valleys. And without the valley, how can there be peak and how can there be valley without peak? If you love peaks, you have to love valleys as well. They become part of a destiny. The mind wants one thing and wants to deny the other. The other is part of it. Mind says life is good, life is bad, but death is one part, the valley part. And the life is the peak. Life is the peak and death is the valley. Life exists because of death and if death disappears, life would also disappear. But mind says, I want only life I do not want death. Then mind moves in a dream, like a state, dream world, which exists nowhere. And it starts fighting with everything, because in life everything is related to the opposite. If you do not want opposite, a fight starts. A person who understands that life is duality accepts both. He accepts death not as against life but as part of it, as the valley part. He accepts night as the valley part of the day. One moment you are blissful, next moment you are sad. You do not want to accept the next moment. That is the valley part. And the higher the peak of bliss, deeper will be the vadi. Because deeper valleys are created only by higher peaks. So the higher you move, the lower you will be falling. And this is just like waves rising high and then there is a valley part. 
Understanding means being aware of this fact, not only being aware, but having a deep acceptance of fact, because you cannot move away from the fact. You can tolerate, you can create a fiction, and we have been creating fictions for centuries. The, we have put hell somewhere deep down and heaven high up somewhere. We have created an absolute division between them. This is nonsense because hell is the valley, part of the heaven. It exists with heaven. Certainly it cannot exist apart. This understanding will help you to be positive and then you will be able to accept everything. This positive that I am talking, it is in the sense of transcendence, not as against the negative. By positive I mean that you accept everything because you know that you cannot divide the existence. When you take a breath in and immediately you have to throw it out, you cannot exit. You exhale and then you have to inhale. If you were only to inhale and not exhale, you would die. So too, if you, you are only to exhale and not inhale, then too you will die. Remember, both inhaling and exhaling are part of one process, a circle called breathing. You can inhale only because you exceed both are together and they cannot be divided this is what awakening is this is what an awakened one is undivided awakening means undivided all inclusive it this state happens once an understanding comes to him, I call a man liberated, enlightened, awakened, who accepts every duality of existence. This is, then he is positive, then whatsoever happens in life is accepted. He, then he has no expectation of any kind, then he makes no demand on existence, then he can float down the stream. And this is the way you are, life is a stream, and you are flowing down the stream. There is no struggle on your part. This is awakening. Such awakening leads you to a life of fulfillment enough for now.